In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to master self-discipline. What's up guys, welcome back to Entrepreneur Hour Podcast and Entrepreneur Hour TV, where we create superhuman entrepreneurs. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to build your discipline, right? How to become more disciplined. A lot of people are like, God, I just wish I was more disciplined. I wish I could just do this, I wish I could do that. And here's the deal, guys. I'm gonna debunk a lot of myths that you maybe have surrounding discipline. And I'm gonna show you how I personally deploy this in my own life. But one of the bigger things is I'm gonna teach you how to use yourself and work with yourself versus working against yourself and constantly playing drill sergeant. I think a lot of us, we get caught up in the weeds because we're constantly just beating ourselves up for stuff that we didn't do the way that we thought we should do it. That's not healthy, that's not fruitful. We're gonna talk more about that. Before we get started, guys, make sure to drop below, subscribe, like, comment, share us with a friend, uh, and make sure you guys check out other videos. I'm actually gonna include one right up here above your head. Uh, it's about habits, building new habits. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is gonna be referencing that video and referencing a lot of the things uh, that I talked about as it relates to habit building. That's uh, a really incremental part of what we're gonna talk about today. And it's if you don't understand that, you really aren't gonna get this part. So they really go hand in hand. If I could do both those videos together, I absolutely would. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and break down. I've got about nine of them for you that we're gonna talk about here today. Nine steps, simple, easy steps, right? I promise you that you guys can easily do today to start being more self-disciplined. All right, so number one is become self more self-aware, right? And it's like, okay, whatever. Right, so what I want you to do is, it starts with self-awareness. So you need to understand yourself, what works for you, what has you've done in the past that didn't work. Oftentimes what I see is that people, every year rolls around, what do they do? They start their New Year's resolutions and they do the exact same thing. It's probably the exact same resolution, the exact same mechanics, the exact same everything they did the year before. And guys, it didn't work, so why do you think it would work now, right? So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna try something different. You're gonna wanna make sure that you are working with yourself not against yourself, right? And so, for example, and this is oftentimes what I tell a lot of my entrepreneurial friends is, dude, you may be doing something that is unnecessary, right? So example, uh, a lot of people, they wanna get up at five o'clock in the morning and they, you know, the early bird gets the worm and they wanna go, you know, be, you know, whatever, that somebody they heard talks about getting up at five in the morning. But here's the deal, if you don't understand chronotypes and you don't understand what works for you specifically, you might be working against yourself. If you're the type of person that you're not a morning person, based on your actual chronotype, I'm gonna include that link below, you can check out and see what chronotype you actually are. You wanna work with yourself, right? And so you may be going against fundamentally who you are to do something. You're an entrepreneur, you have a blank canvas. You can do this thing however you wanna do it. The bottom line is this, you need to focus on impact not time. Impact, not time. So what does that mean? If you can get the work done and you're working from three in the afternoon to nine o'clock at night instead of you know five in the morning till 12 and suffering the whole time because you're not a morning person and you're having to drink, you caffeinate yourself to death to get through it, what do you think is gonna be more effective for you, right? So you wanna make sure that whatever you're creating for yourself is in alignment with awareness as to who you are and what works for you and what doesn't work for you, right? And that doesn't mean that you're gonna be complacent. That doesn't mean that you're gonna give up on the things that you wanna set up for yourself. What it means is, is that you're gonna work you know, in alignment with what you've seen work for you and what hasn't worked for you. And honestly, go back and look at the times that you've achieved something. And my guess is that there's a pattern there. There's uh, elements that you can uncover and elements you can look into and be like, okay, this is what I did. I had a coach, I had accountability partners, um, it was something that was important to me at that moment in time. It was something that was urgent because I had time limit. Right? Whatever the case may be, what you wanna to try to do is figure out what's worked for you and then you're just gonna replicate that, right? And so we're gonna get into more of the, like I said, the specifics and the mechanics of it, but it starts with self-awareness, right? Because at the end of the day, I, I've talked to many of my clients about stuff like this and my students too. And it's like, why are you forcing yourself to do that, right? Like, why are you doing that? And like, well, because so-and-so does that, right? Like, here's the deal. Success is specific, right? So success is specific to what it means to you, right? And it's totally, uh, uh, it's totally subjective, right? So if you can create something that works for you, who cares what anybody else is doing, right? That you can borrow elements of stuff that they're doing and you can borrow stuff like we're gonna talk about here today, but make sure it fits inside your box. Make sure it works for you. I think that's first and foremost, and, and honestly, the most important thing here. A, a lot of the biggest founders, I'm gonna get off this point, we're gonna move on, but a lot of the bigger founders that have done things just tremendously well, they've redefined leadership. They've redefined how they run an organization, right? Things that they've done were like cringeworthy before they did it, like thinking about Mark Zuckerberg, right? Like there's a lot of things that have been done uh, that they've done that they've rewritten the book, and it, it, it was by, 
operating within their own integrity, operating within awareness of themselves and operating the way that they wanted to operate. You're an entrepreneur, you have that freedom to do so. So it's very, very important. Uh, number two, be patient, be gentle and move on from your failures. One of the bigger issues that I see with people is they just expect to just get it right, right out of the gates. This is what I wanna do. I'm gonna get it right this year. And the minute that the day that they miss, even if it's the first day that they don't do whatever it is they set out to do, right? I'm gonna be healthy this year, right? Whatever that means. Um, they, they screw it up and that's fine, you're going to, right? Like, you're not a machine, you're a human being, right? And so you wanna be gentle, be patient with yourself, be working towards something, right? You're, you are, you wanna create, the biggest thing you wanna focus on is you wanna focus on momentum because momentum leads to motivation and the motivation filters right back into momentum. So a lot of people get those two reversed. They focus on, I'm not motivated. Well, yeah, because you haven't made any progress. You haven't gone out and just rolled up your sleeves and done any of the work to see results those results, if done appropriately, make you more motivated, right? And then so that loop, you wanna keep feeding that loop, but it doesn't happen if you're drill sergeant in your head the whole time and you're beating yourself up throughout the process. So be gentle, be patient, and anything you've tried in the past, that's in the past, man. This is the here and the now. Don't worry about the future, don't worry about the past, just right now. This is what you're doing this time and nothing else matters right now, right? This is what you're gonna do and you're gonna use everything as a taste, as a, as a, as a, a case study or as a test. All right, number three is have a plan for your weaknesses, all right? So I talked about before, like I'm just not a morning person. Personally, I'm not a morning person at all, right? So you're gonna have a plan for your weaknesses. That could, ev that could involve um, the way you allocate your resources, that can involve the, the people you bring into your team, that can involve the things that you outsource, uh, that can involve the food that you keep in your home, the people you surround yourselves with, uh, yourself with, uh, the things that, that you, you expose yourself to. It, 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 the list goes on and on and on and on. But you want to first have the self-awareness like we talked about number one, but then also those weaknesses that you find you wanna make sure that you're doing something about it, right? So I'll give you one of mine. I am on my phone all the time, this one right here. I'm on my phone all the time. So one of the things that I do is uh, I lock my phone out. You can do that, there's settings, you can, you can have it where it just locks your phone out basically um, from certain hours to certain hours, right? And so from, from you know nine o'clock in the morning and then at seven o'clock at night, anything that doesn't get done in those time frames, it locks me out. Otherwise, I know that that's too much of a temptation for me. I'm on there, I'm endlessly scrolling, I'm looking up stuff, and it's just not good for me to be doing that 24 hours a day. First thing I do when I roll over in bed is I, in the morning is I wanna look at my phone and see what's going on, right? Or did I get any blah, blah, blah? It doesn't matter, right? I need clear headspace. And so I am protecting myself from myself. Most, we're gonna get into this in a minute about motivation and about specifically about willpower. Um, but in those, in those moments where you have those temptations, you, you wanna eliminate those or mitigate those as much as possible so that you are not giving into those weaknesses. You want to you want to respect those weaknesses probably more than you are right now. All right, number four is eliminate potential temptations like I just talked about. So for me, uh, one of the things that I do when I'm working throughout my day is I don't even keep my phone near me, right? Like it's totally away from me and I have my headphones on and you can see that there's no wire to this thing, they're Bluetooth. So I don't need that stupid thing with me. Otherwise it, it buzzes and this and that. And another thing I do with it is I put on do not disturb. And that way, and this is how the this is how the bad habit kind of started. This is how I was like constantly just on my phone, and I call myself a checkaholic. Was that stupid thing is training you every time it beeps, every time it buzzes? Look at your phone. Look at your phone. Look at your phone. Right. And and, and here's the thing: we live in a world now, a digital world, where those things are everywhere. Right. Like those temptations are everywhere, and we have to make sure that we're being vigilant about how we protect ourselves from those things because it's amazing. We've li we live in a world of just endless technology, right? And all those things provide us and serve us in ways that we could have never dreamed possible. But at the same time, they can be your worst enemy if you're not being careful. So you want to create an environment that is conducive to you eliminating, minding your weaknesses and then eliminating or at least mitigating uh, your temptations as much as possible. And a lot of people see that with diet, right? So what's the best way to stop eating ice cream? don't have ice cream in your house, right? Or have an ice cream substitute, right? Mind your weakness, I love sweets, have a healthy alternative to that, right? There's a lot of, uh, there's an abundance of, of substitutes out there that can maybe satisfy, like put stevia, right? Make your own homemade, I have homemade coconut ice cream. I make it, I put stevia in it, it's tremendous for me. It's, it's, it's amazing and, and I don't miss you know, anything that I would have. I'm a big fan of Natamu. If you guys are in Austin, Texas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's fantastic, it's amazing. Um, but 
you know, it, right now, like that's not something that I should be indulging in, right? Because of my own health journey. And we've talked about that ad nauseum. Um, so I make my own homemade stuff, right? So there are alternatives out there. You wanna make sure that whatever you do, you replace it with something else to, to alleviate those concerns. A lot of people just try to go cold turkey and that's a, that's a huge mistake. You wanna try to swap out the, 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 the routine that you have now with a, with a more desirable routine. And so doing something like that um, is it, gonna be a lot more beneficial, but also putting up those barriers and blocking yourself from doing things like I've done with my phone uh, is another way to eliminate or mitigate those temptations. All right, number five, discipline is overrated, guys. Like, probably should have let out with that, but discipline is overrated. What you wanna focus on is one thing at a time and, and make a list, literally make a list as you're listening to this video of all the things that you want to change, right? All the new things that, that you want to do, the ways that you wanna operate, the ways that you wanna conduct yourself as a professional or even personally, right? Um, and you wanna focus on the most important one, right? So the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller, he talks about this. And, it, and it's first establishing what's my one thing that by doing such uh, makes everything else easier or unnecessary is his like famous quote from the book. It's a tremendous read, I highly recommend it. We actually just read it in my VIP book club. You can check out a link below to learn more about that. Um, but one of the things that he mentioned is that discipline's overrated. And what's more important is short-term discipline to build new habits, okay? So we're gonna focus on one thing. What's the one thing we wanna change? What's the most important thing that's gonna create impact that we're looking for? And then how can I create short-term discipline to accommodate that, to accomplish that? Because what we often end up doing is we're focused on changing 25 things at once, right? And then they all have to be done right now in two weeks. Well, that's irrational and illogical, right? So what they found, what studies have found is that the average was 16 to like 200 and so days that it took you to build a new habit. So successful people are not more disciplined than you. Newsflash, they're not, I promise you. I've interviewed most of these people and studies have shown that they are not inherently more disciplined than you. What they do know and what they do understand is that they have uh, um, an assortment or a toolkit of success habits. And that's why I said habits in my video about habits goes hand in hand with this. They have a toolkit of better success habits than you have. And the reason that's so powerful is that you have a part of your brain called the basal ganglia that starts to store habits. Your brain in that regard is like a computer. And so what it's doing is it's telling the brain, yeah, we're gonna remember this. And the more you do that, it's creating that neural pathway and it becomes, you go into autopilot. So think about this. Think about waking up in the morning and just going to the gym because it's become a habit. Not because you're forcing yourself or willpowering yourself or thinking you don't have discipline and then beating yourself up about it. It's because you have ingrained that as a success habit. So you want to figure out what are the core habits that I need to build in my life, keystone habits that I need to build in my life. And then how can I create short-term discipline for 66 days is a sweet spot number, by the way. I know I said 16 to 250, um, but the sweet spot they found for, average, for the average person to build a new habit was 66 days. So a little bit over two months, right? So that's it. Two months of doing a particular habit, whether that's going to the gym, uh, whether that's being, you know, whatever, something more disciplined in your business, uh, whether that's, you know, doing the work in your business, whatever, right? So be gentle, focus on short-term discipline and understand that it takes about 66 days to rewire this thing to start making it a habit. Once it becomes a habit, then it becomes easy. Then you're not constantly fighting yourself over it because it's just part of what you do and it's it, your body and your brain goes into autopilot. So much so that in the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, he talks about, uh, I, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but it was another study that was done where he actually lost, there was a hole in his brain, literally, from a virus that, get, that basically prevented him from being able to retain memories. No short-term memories whatsoever. And what they found, which was crazy, is that he could still build habits regardless because the basal ganglia in his brain, he could go out and go for walks around his community and still come back to his house. Or he'd play these card games and he would know you know, within a, a pretty short period of time, like a month, I think, uh, he was having like 85 to 90% success rates of basically turning over the cards that had the desired outcome on the other side, right? This is a guy that has no short-term memory, but he can still do those things. Why? Because he's building habits, not focused on the discipline. So that should really empower you to know, 
I didn't have to have my full brain working the way that it's supposed to, and I can still build these habits with short-term discipline, with just every single day for 66 days, staying committed, knowing that it's gonna be a hurdle, knowing that it's gonna be tough, knowing that it's gonna feel uncomfortable, but knowing that it's a short-term means to an end to build a new success habit or a keystone habit. So very, very important to know that. Uh, number six, willpower is overrated, right? And so, uh, again, another controversial statement, but guys, I'm telling you right now, if you're relying solely on willpower, uh, and that's been your modality from from the, the time that you started to build, uh, you know, to work on discipline or whatever, if it's just all, yes, I want to be fired up and rock and roll. As you know, some days you just roll out of bed, guys, and it's just not there. Some days it might, right? And so I think that's where you see that yo-yoing. And then I think what happens is when you rely solely on willpower is A, we've learned more and more that willpower is like a muscle, right? And so it gets depleted. And so I can go to all, their, all these other kind of studies, right? But, but basically, people that have had to exert tremendous amounts of willpower, what they find is that there is a period of recovery after that. So they tested people and then they, they had to, to demonstrate or, or to, they had to utilize their willpower. And then right after that, they were given a written assessment and they scored poorly compared to the people that didn't have to exert willpower before they took the test, substantially lower, right? And so what they found is that what we do is we're constantly walking around through our day, willpower, 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 and then eventually you just weaken, right? And you give in and then you start eating Taco Bell and, and I'm not throwing shade at Taco Bell, but you get what I'm saying, right? Eating fast food or giving up on things because you just run out of the energy to do it, right? And so you think there's something inherently wrong with you, why is everybody else so disciplined and I'm not? I just wish I had more willpower, I wish I had more motivation, I wish I had more discipline, right? They're like kind of all in that same conversation. So you need to understand that it's highly, highly overrated and that it's not a mechanism scientifically proven that leads to positive outcomes, right? So you wanna focus on, okay, this is not gonna work. I have to stop beating myself up. What can I do to start working with myself instead of beating myself up all the time and thinking that willpower, the depletable resource that it is, right? It's like going to the gym and thinking you just bench press all day. No one's gonna think they can do that. That's irrational logic. It's the same thing. If you're going all day long, run, 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 marathon, marathon, 24 hours a day, as you've seen probably, you, you, you might make it a few hours before you're just completely spent, right? It's just not a, a, a long-term successful plan for you. So it's highly overrated and you need to understand that. Um, number seven is implement rewards. So another thing as far as building habits, and I talk about this in my habits video, and again, you know, go check that out, but it's cues and rewards, right? So cues, I wanna cue something that creates a new routine that I want, AKA a habit. Um, but then at the end, I wanna reward myself for that because then that feeds into this really awesome loop that starts to help you ingrain that habit. So here's what we often do. We beat ourselves up and we don't have willpower. But then when we actually accomplish something and we do the things that we want, we don't celebrate it. So I don't care if you have to start celebrating the, the tiniest things in your life, right? The littlest wins that, that you've ever achieved, but start doing that, right? And when you start doing that, you start rewarding yourself for the things that you've done positively, the things that you, know, you, you should be proud of, but you don't think about is, a, you're gonna condition the brain to start wanting that more, right? You're gonna want that dopamine hit of, yes, I accomplished something and I did something, which is gonna lead to you, again, momentum leads to motivation, which then filters back into your momentum, right? So those are gonna feed into each other. The reward mechanism is usually what is going to also feed into uh, your motivation. So you really wanna take advantage of that. It's a powerful, powerful recipe without the rewards. You find, out, you find out that you're just kind of being a masochist. You're just beating yourself up and expecting yourself to be a machine, and you're not. So it's a very important thing to add, and it's a very important thing to know here. Number eight, have an accountability group or an accountability partner. So you're gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have moments where you think you've done something and then you start slipping, or you get sick, or something comes up, or something disrupts your, your cadence, or whatever. Having an accountability group and kind of talking through those things and having somebody encourage you and be there and support you and all those things, Really, really powerful thing, guys. It's gonna be an amazing thing for you to, to stay on task. Uh, and if somebody understands the science and watches this video with you, and I highly recommend you share it with them, and say, you know what, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to, to adopt a new way and a new mechanism of approaching my discipline and the things that I wanna build and the life that I wanna create. If that's you, I think you need to have an accountability buddy. And you guys can check in and share with each other uh, what's going on, what you can do differently, what's working, what's not working. And they can also help you with the self-awareness part too. They can say, hey, you know, I've, I've seen you do this thing a lot and it just really doesn't work for you like you think it does. And I think you should try this instead, right? And, and be open to having that conversation, right? Put yourself in a place to be willing to have that conversation. So I think that's a really important point, but you know, in terms of recognition, I think that's a huge part of it. And, and also too, when you know you have to report to somebody, you know, at the end of the week or whatever, usually that kind of 
just in itself holds you accountable, right? So I think that's an important aspect of it that we should mention as well. And then finally, if none of these things work, right? And you're just depleted and you feel like, you know, hey, I'm just not motivated and I don't know what's going on and I've done all these things, it's still not working is, you might have a health issue, all right? And so I often tell people this, you're not lazy, you're sick, right? And, and most of us are. And if you know anything about my message, it's, it's really focused around building a foundation. And part of that foundation is health and wellness. And maybe not something you wanna hear right now. You wanna focus on building your business and making more sales and getting more customers and things of that nature. But I can tell you this, um, when you have a health crisis, such as what I've had, uh, you, you quickly realize that you can have the mechanics, you can know the X's and O's, it doesn't matter, right? If, if, if big things, doing big things requires big energy. If you don't have big energy, those things aren't gonna matter, right? And so you can be doing all the right things, and if you're still just not at a point where you feel super motivated and you're not getting progress and you're not seeing momentum, and maybe there's something wrong, right? And so I'm gonna drop a link below. Uh, highly, highly, highly recommend this resource. Uh, but it starts with the gut, right? The gut leads, it, it really is, is the, the, the command center, so to speak, of, of your nutritional profile, right? And so anything that you consume is either gonna energize your body or it's gonna deplete your body, right? And so part of that is understanding what your specific body requires and what it's lacking to function the way that it should, right? And so there's a lot of different labs and stuff that I'd recommend, but I wanna start cheap. I wanna make sure that this is an affordable investment for you, but start with a Viome. Right, and so Viome, that's V-I-O-M-E, uh, highly recommend it. It's kind of gross as far as how you collect your, your samples. I won't get too specific, but it is gut related, if you catch what I'm saying. Uh, but they also have a food sensitivity add-on that you can do, right? And I think it's like another 30 or 50 bucks or something. But anyway, the total investment is gonna be under $200. Um, and it's gonna give you nutritional profile, foods that you should avoid. Here's why I say that. When I got sick, I had an, uh, my immune system was weakened for obvious reasons, right? I became very chronically ill. Um, I was eating a lot of very healthy foods, avocados, almonds, you know, things of that nature, like things that are very, very, you know, under normal circumstances, very, very good for you. I had sensitivities to all of them, all of them, and I was eating them every single day. I got off those foods, I lost 10 pounds in three weeks just being off those foods because my body was just grossly inflamed because I was eating foods that I had a sensitivity to, not an allergy, a sensitivity, there's a fundamental difference. So. All these things, they don't matter unless you can master the part, which is mastering yourself and you operating at a peak level, you operating at peak performance. This is the most fundamental part of you being at, a, being at an optimal level is you giving your body what it needs to perform. You are the asset to your business. You will always be the number one asset to your business. This and your decision-making ability is paramount. If you don't have your health, you're gonna make poor decisions and you're not gonna have the energy required to do what you need to do. So if you've tried everything else and all else has failed, Definitely do those things. Even if you haven't done those things, even if you, you are seeing results, I would still get tested if it were me. If you really wanna be a peak performer, if you really wanna be a superhuman entrepreneur, I would still do those things because here's the deal. You're probably, you, even if you are good, if you still have something going on, right? You're probably still leaving meat on the bone. I, I don't wanna leave meat on the bone. I wanna achieve my, I wanna achieve whatever I wanna achieve to the fullest, right? And so. I would take that test regardless. I don't get paid at all for telling you that. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with, with Viome at all other than just being a super fan of what they do. Um, but I would start with that and, and you know figure out what's going on with your specific body. With all diets, guys, personalized, not standardized. I, I hate fad diets. Personalized, not standardized. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe below, hit the bell for notifications, comment below, share it with a friend, share it on social media. If you have somebody you know that needs to hear this, uh, maybe a friend that you wanna, like I said, you wanna be accountability buddy with, share it with them. Maybe that's something you guys can do together and it can be beneficial for you, right? I have a lot of success with, with working with people and, and just having that, that dialogue, right? Just feeling like I'm not alone in something. Also guys, if you wanna check out my VIP book club, it's a digital book club specifically for entrepreneurs where we read a lot of these books actually all of these books that I've talked about as far as case studies. And it's been really helpful and empowering to kind of know the studies and the science and the, me and the mechanics of all these various things other than just kind of understanding them in theory or hearing somebody else talk about it, right? So this is what we do every single month. It's an, it's an amazing community. Uh, we do weekly insights every single week, progress reports. We don't expect you to read like crazy. It's seven to 10 pages a day. And then we have a live lecture at the end of every single month where I'm giving you actionable takeaways uh, and things you can do to get real results in your business. You can grab my link below, use promo code YouTube to get your first month for only $7. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.